college students, this is Non-Flowering Plants, and today I want to make a comparison of Homosporus lycopodium versus Heterosporus selaginella. These are both lycophytes, and uh, they are both have a life cycle in which the sporophyte grows off of the gametophyte and attains dominance. So in other words, they're pteridophyte. So let's start with lycopodium. Remember, lycopodium is the Homosporus one. We'll have sperm and egg, and they get together at fertilization and make a zygote. That zygote's first division makes a suspensor cell of the embryo, and then it makes an embryonic cell. The embryonic cell goes on to make the rest of the embryo. So there we have an embryo with a foot and a shoot and a first leaf, and the suspensor cell is still there. Then we can see a young sporophyte growing off of an old gametophyte, and it's going to use up that gametophyte. The gametophyte will wither, and the sporophyte will live on for years and years. Here's uh, a more developed sporophyte, which has uh, roots and its leaves, and then stroboli. And if we take a section through one of those stroboli, we get a strobilus that uh, has sporophylls, and those sporophylls are microphylls. They are a leaf that has a sporangium born on it. The sporangia in Lycopodium, they all make the same kinds of spores that are homosporous spores. So we have a sporocyte, it undergoes meiosis, makes spores, the spores are haploid, the spores disperse. Now in Lycopodium, the spores live for a really long time, potentially. They kind of land on the soil and filter into the soil a little bit. They start to grow, and then they form, if they're really lucky, a relationship with a fungus. And this relationship with a fungus allows them to get their nutrients from the fungus. So they don't photosynthesize primarily. Most of their growth and energy comes from the fungus, kind of tricking it into giving them energy. So we'll call that a heterotrophic gametophyte heterotrophic gametophyte, and they're more or less underground. That heterotrophic gametophyte can then grow archegonia and antheridia. So there we have an archegonium, and that archegonium has uh, canal cells and neck cells, and we have an antheridium, and that antheridium has jacket cells and spermatogenous tissue inside that then grow up to be sperm. Okay, so that was the homosporous life cycle. Now let's contrast that to Selaginella, which has a heterosporous life cycle. Here's Selaginella, and there's two rows up top there. The very top row are the microspores that will give rise to microgametophytes, and uh, I'll try to call them male spores and male gametophytes. And then in the middle, we have megaspores that give rise to megagametophytes, and I'll try to call them female gametophytes. Let's start with sperm and egg. They get uh, together at fertilization and form a zygote. The zygote divides. We get a suspensor cell and an embryonic cell. The embryonic cell continues to divide and it forms this apical meristem which allows it to grow a shoot. Here's the embryo with uh, a foot rooted in the gametophyte, uh, a root and a shoot, and then the suspensor's still there too. So then the next stage there, we see a young sporophyte, and it's growing off of uh, the megaspore. You can see the megaspore wall there that would have contained the megagametophyte inside of it. And it's no bigger than it was when it was made. Here's a picture of the uh, mature sporophyte. It has roots on a rhizophore. It has leaves, and those leaves we'll call microphylls. A microphyll is something that has a single vein in it or evolved from something that had a single vein in it, as opposed to in ferns, where the leaves are megaphylls that have branchy veins. And on this selaginella, we have a strobilus. Uh, if we take a section through that strobilus, we can see that there are two different kinds of sporangia. There's a female sporangium there, 
and it's on a female sporophyll. And then there's also male sporangia, and a male sporangium is on a male sporophyll, which I'll sometimes call microsporophylls. Inside of a male sporangium, you'll get a lot of sporocytes, and those sporocytes undergo meiosis and then disperse. And they're kind of like spores of ferns. Uh, you know, they're pretty small. So a cool thing that happens is that inside of that male spore, you have a division. And that starts making the male gametophyte. The male gametophyte, the first division, is into a little teeny cell called the prothallial cell. Uh, and that's thought to be the remnants or the vestiges of the ancient ancestral vegetative gametophyte. And then the other cell is the antheridial initial. And that antheridial initial then goes on to divide and form jacket cells. Inside of the jacket cells, there's initially four primary spermatogenous cells. And those spermatogenous cells divide and divide and eventually make a bunch of sperm. Now, if we focus on the middle line, you get a, a megasporocyte or a female sporocyte that gives rise to four female spores. And there's four female spores that are all in the same sporangium in Selaginella, only four. Each of these four spores could then develop into a female gametophyte. And that female gametophyte, it undergoes a bunch of cell divisions. Some of the nuclei don't get separated by cell walls, and so it's said to be a free nuclear cytoplasm. And then other portions of it eventually do get cell partitions between them, and uh, so that's the cellular portion. It also has some rhizoids, and it's completely the same size as the female spore. Like, it doesn't do any photosynthesis. It just stays that size. It makes archegonia. Those archegonia have uh, neck cells and canal cells and, of course, an egg. So that was my comparison of the homosporous uh, lycopodium to the heterosporous selaginella. They have two fairly different life cycles, but you can see how they could have evolved from one homosporous condition. And you can also think of heterospory as a convergent evolution on something. That is, seed plants are also heterosporous, and so Selaginella has independently invented heterospory, very separate from seed plants. And that's all that I have to say about that.